Hey, Dr. Scott Stevens here. Let's say you've got some data. Maybe it's categorical data, which means that, frankly, everything's determined by what category it goes in. Maybe you're specifying colors, red, green, blue, and so on. Not a lot that you can do with that kind of data, other than count how many things fall into each category. Maybe you have five red objects. That's ta that table, which would list all the categories and how many fall into each, would be called a frequency distribution. The frequency is simply to count the number of observations in a category. You could also figure out not how many, but what fraction of observations fall in a category. If I had five red items, but a total of 50 items in my study, then 5 fiftieths, or 10% of the observations, would be in the red category. My, its relative frequency would be 0.1. Relative always just means fraction of the total when you're talking about statistics. Pretty easy. We can also do the same kind of thing if we have numeric data. If there aren't too many categories, for example, how many children in your family, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, getting the numbers bigger than 10 would be pretty unlikely. But if we have a lot of numbers that are very different, we can do the same thing by creating categories of numbers, everything from 1 to 100, from 101 to 200, from 201 to 300, and so on. And again, we'll have a frequency distribution or a relative frequency distribution. And we've seen how to make graphs of these things, bar charts, pie charts, and histograms. But today, I want to talk about a different thing you can do with that same data. It's a very simple idea, essentially the idea of a running total. I could obviously list my categories and say, how many things total have I gotten in the categories I've done so far? For example, maybe I have five people who made between one and a thousand bucks, and eight people who made between one thousand and two thousand bucks and 10 more that made between 2,000 and 3,000 bucks. I could then say, how many made 1,000 or less, or 2,000 or less, or 3,000 or less? I could keep a running total. The technical term for that in statistics is the cumulative distribution. Cumulative just means running total. When you talk to somebody at college and you ask them what their cumulative average is, it's not the average for this semester, it's the average over all of the semesters so far. And that's what we're going to be talking about here too. Let's see how to do it, and we'll play around with Excel. So, here we are in Excel, and I've loaded up a frequency distribution that we came up with in the video that we did on histograms. Basically, I went out and looked at 100 U.S. households and found out how much money each of those households makes over the course of a year. Those 100 values were then sorted into categories, each $50,000 wide, and the table that you see here is the result. For example, there were 51 families out of the 100 that made between zero and $50,000, and 22 families that made between $50,000 and $100,000 over the course of the year. The only ambiguity in this table is what if someone makes exactly $50,000? Which category do they go in? Well, by convention, each category goes up to but does not include its upper limit. So if you make $49,999.99, you're in this first category. $50,000 puts you into the second. As you can see, that probably doesn't happen very much. Okay, from this table, I want to get the cumulative frequency. And you know what that means. Cumulative means running total. So the first number should simply be, what's the running total of everybody up through the first category? Well, that's simply 51 households. How about up through the second category? Well, 51 people have already been counted in the first category, but including the second category increases that by 22 more people. That is, it'll bring us up to 73. The formula that I wrote said, take the thing directly above me and add it to the thing immediately to my left. And that formula will work for the rest of the table. I can click on this cell, go to the lower right corner, and until the fat cross turns into a skinny one, hold down the left mouse button and drag copy that formula all the way to the bottom. And it will keep a running total all the way down. For example, 92 of the families made less than $250,000, the sum of all the numbers down that far. It says that there are a total of 100 families that make $600,000 or less, and we can verify that is true. The sum command adds up the things you put into it. How many families total? 100, like I said. Okay, how about relative frequency? Remember what it means? It's the fraction of the whole. So 51 families out of the total 100 families gives us, not surprisingly, 51%. The numbers look so similar here because the total happened to be 100. If it were something different, those numbers in column B and column D wouldn't match up so nicely.
To make this formula work so I can drag it down, I need to change the B15, the number in the bottom, to dollar sign $B$ dollar sign $15. This is absolute addressing, something that we'll be talking about in class. And doing so means that when I drag this formula, the bottom number, the 100 that I'm dividing by, will never change. So as I go all the way down, I'll be getting fractions of all the values. That is, for example, 1% of my sample, that is one person out of 100, fell into that last category of 550000 to $600,000. Okay, last bit. How do we make it a cumulative relative frequency? Cumulative just means running total. So I play the same game I played in tying column B and column C together. I begin with the first entry, and thereafter I say that the next entry is everything I've got totaled up so far, plus the stuff in the new category. When I drag that formula down, I end up with a total of 100% at the bottom. You can see that 99 stayed there for a while and didn't change because these categories added nothing new to the total. There weren't anybody in those categories. We'll see that again when we talk about a graph that we can make of these sort of things called ogives. But before we can talk about that, we need one more kind of graph, and that's called the frequency polygon. That's what the next video is about. Go check it out.